In a world dominated by Wall Street, big banks and institutions, a bunch of Japanese housewives armed with laptops and a can-do attitude turned global finance upside down. They weren't your usual financial wizards, but their actions cost ways in the global currency market, shaking up the status quo with every yen traded. They are known as Mrs. Watanabe. And this is how they shook the global financial markets from their homes forever. In the late 20th century, Japan was on top of the world economically. Everything seemed to be going great, with financial markets booming like never before. The 1980s were Japan's golden age, reaching amazing heights in economic power. Their GDP soared, making them the second largest economy globally. It was all thanks to their incredible recovery and industrial strength after the war. This time is often called the bubble era because property prices in cities shot up, bringing immense wealth and hope. The bubble burst eventually, showing that the success of the 80s couldn't last forever. The early 90s brought a rude awakening when the asset price bubble burst in Japan. This led to a long period of economic stagnation that haunted the country for over a decade. The consequences were significant wiping out huge amounts of wealth and burdening the banking sector with non-performing loans. In response, the Bank of Japan started a bold monetary experiment by slashing interest rates to near zero to boost economic activity. This drastic change aimed to encourage spending and investment in an economy where consumers and businesses had become cautious and risk averse. However, the result was an environment where traditional saving methods lost their appeal due to minimal returns. As Japan's financial markets went down and interest rates dropped, the traditional idea of the Japanese housewife managing savings had to deal with a whole new situation. Traditional savings accounts just weren't cutting it anymore. So these savvy women decided to take a different route to financial security. They saw an opportunity in forex trading, making the most of low interest rates with the carry trade strategy. What started as a bold adventure into the foreign exchange markets, usually for the pros, turned into a big deal. These housewives, aka Mrs. Watanabe, dove into trading, methodically impacting global currency values. So let's talk about carry trade, a strategy that's both simple and clever. You basically borrow yen at super low rates and then put that money into currencies or assets that give you better returns. It's like finance 101. You buy low, sell high, but with a currency twist. Cool, right? The strategy was pretty straightforward, but groundbreaking. Here's how it goes. You borrow yen at super low rates, then exchange it for currencies from countries where banks actually give you a nice interest on deposits. It's kinda like trading a slow horse for a faster one during the race. Mrs. Watanabe really knew how to work those global interest rate differences in their favor. More than a million housewives jumped into the ring, swapping yen for dollars, euros and Australian dollars, each trying to outsmart the market. Their influence wasn't just about money, but rippled through the finance world from Tokyo to New York. What began as a spark of curiosity, among a few, well grew into a massive wave of participation. Japanese housewives, also known as Mrs. Watanabe, didn't just test the waters in the forex markets, they jumped right in. So their approach was all methodical, informed and surprisingly effective. And guess what? The financial world, used to underestimating them, just couldn't believe their eyes as these women began shaking up currency values worldwide. The implications were huge. The carry trade, which used to be a niche strategy, suddenly became a big player in forex trading, all thanks to Mrs. Watanabe's collective power. It was a clear sign that global finance was changing. The traditional players were caught off guard, now having to deal with this new, unexpected force. Back in August 1998, the Russian financial crisis, or the ruble crisis as some call it, really shook things up in the financial world. It caused the ruble to lose value and made Russia default on its government debt, creating a lot of chaos in global markets. The crisis hit Mrs. Watanabe traders hard. 
it triggered a rush for saver assets like the Japanese yen. The yen value spiked out of the blue and messed up the carry trade plan, where they borrowed yen to invest in assets with better returns. With the yen getting stronger, paying back those loans in the pricier yen became more costly, cutting into profits and adding a lot of risk to their once successful plan. Suddenly, the strategy that seemed like a golden ticket was showing its cracks, as the value of the yen surged against other currencies turning potential profits into losses overnight. This was just the beginning of the problems. The Bank of Japan's quantitative easing QE program in the early 2000s was a pretty bold move to kickstart an economy stuck in deflation. By going all out on buying assets and pumping yen into the system, the bank aimed to turn around the deflationary trend and get people spending. For the savvy Mrs. Watanabe traders, this move could mean watching their savings lose value as the yen's purchasing power drops. But here's the thing, that policy actually made the carry trade more appealing. People were borrowing at low rates at home to invest in higher yielding options abroad. And guess what? The yen's value dropped because of QE, giving them an even bigger margin to play with. The interest rate gaps between yen and foreign assets just kept getting wider. They had to juggle between dealing with domestic inflation, gobbling up savings and alluring yields from overseas markets. Mrs. Watanabe traders had to step cautiously because the QE program shook things up on many fronts. Think currency strength, investment gains and the economy's general well-being. It took a flexible and detailed approach to personal finance, needing you to always stay alert and be ready to adjust to changing economic conditions. Plus, Japan's QE was unlike anything before, carrying some big risks. It was a huge experiment and they couldn't predict the results. The traders not only had to consider potential impact at home, but also how international markets might react to Japan's monetary policy. As central banks worldwide watched and at times copied Japan's moves, the Mrs. Watanabe traders were right in the middle of this global financial experiment, with their fortunes linked to policies crafted miles away, yet shaping their trading strategies directly. So we are in a recession. Everyone else is watching and they're seeing these big negative Thanks, numbers Lois. and their confidence gets back. And those memories of fear are coming back. What the heck is going on down here? Uh, I don't know. All of a sudden here we started hearing... The 2008 financial crisis really put Mrs. Watanabe's investment strategy to the test. It was a huge deal, all kicked off by Lehman Brothers' collapse and it totally changed how things worked in the financial world. For the network of Japanese housewives who got into forex trading, the crisis really opened their eyes to how crazy global finance can be and the risks of their investment strategy, the carry trade. The carry trade, a key part of Mrs. Watanabe's investing style, it was doing really well before the crisis, riding on Japan's super low interest rates. But when the financial chaos hit in 2008, this go-to strategy turned into a total mess in no time. As panic started to spread and investors all over the world were rushing for safe havens, the value of the yen just shut up. This sudden boost in the yen's value completely changed how the carry trade worked. Loans that were taking in yen to invest in assets that promised higher returns became a lot pricier to pay back all of a sudden, wiping out profits and causing big losses in many cases. The effect on Mrs. Watanabe investors was huge. Many watched their life savings and financial security disappear due to market ups and downs. Faced with those tough truths, Mrs. Watanabe traders had to rethink and adjust their investment game plan. After the crisis, there was a noticeable move towards diversifying investments. No longer just sticking to the carry trade, these investors started checking out a broader set of financial tools like stocks, ETFs and other assets that aren't as affected by currency market shifts. Mrs. Watanabe traders, a lot of whom got into forex trading for their high returns but without fully grasping the risks, now approach the market more cautiously and with better insight. 
This included a greater emphasis on short-term trading strategies, which allowed for more flexibility and responsiveness to market conditions, reducing exposure to long-term geopolitical and economic shifts that could trigger another crisis. When Shinzo Abe took office back in 2012, Japan was buzzing with excitement. Abe wasn't just talking about change. He had this bold plan to revamp Japan's sluggish economy and get this, they even named the plan after him. Abenomics wasn't just some policy on paper, it was a triple threat strategy to breathe life into the world's third largest economy. The first arrow, monetary easing, was like opening the floodgates to let money flow like never before. The Bank of Japan went all in on aggressive money printing to get inflation going and break free from that deflation cycle that had Japan in a tight spot. Then they shifted gears to focus on fiscal stimulus, ramping up government spending to rev up demand and spur economic growth. The third arrow, which focused on structural reforms, was all about giving the Japanese economy a long-term makeover. It aimed to revamp everything from labor markets to corporate governance. When Abenomics kicked in, it was like a boost of energy straight to Japan's economic heart. The stock market was totally pumped up, rallying like it's been ages. Mrs. Watanabe and her buddies sure noticed. And with the yen taking a hit from Abe's policy, the carry trade started looking pretty tempting again. But now they were smarter, with more refined strategies. They weren't just returning to the forex market. They were diversifying, exploring stocks, bonds and new financial instruments that had come into play. Yet Abenomics wasn't without its skeptics. Critics pointed out the risks of ballooning government debt and questioned the sustainability of such aggressive monetary policies. Could this just be a temporary lift for the economy with long-term consequences yet to surface? For Mrs. Watanabe, all these big economic discussions were like, hmm, where should we stash our family savings now? And guess what? Some folks hit the jackpot in the bustling stock market, riding on the abenomics wave to recover from previous financial rough patches. Others ran into setbacks, just a reminder of how crazy the markets can be and the risks of going all in on speculative investments. It's Interesting how Japanese retail investors like Mrs. Watanabe still have such a big impact on global financial markets. Shows a bigger picture, right? Economic policies, no matter how domestically focused, have ripple effects beyond borders, influencing currency values, stock markets and global trade flows. Technological advancements have really changed the game in financial markets, turning day trading from something only the pros did into a strategy that even Mrs. Watanabe can consider. It's not just about access, it's about giving them the tools that used to be reserved for Wall Street and Tokyo traders. Today, having a smartphone is like holding a key to the world's financial pool. It's all about real-time data, quick analysis and trades happening in a flash. And hey, thanks to social media, online forums and trading apps, it's not just about access, it's about building a community. Japanese retail investors, including many housewives, are now sharing insights, strategies and stories of success and setbacks, all at their fingertips. In Mrs. Watanabe's world, day trading has taken on a new form. Their portfolio isn't just about Forex anymore, it could include cryptocurrencies, ETFs and commodities. This shows a wider interest in diversification and a sharp focus on global trends. The strategies have really stepped up their game, using a mix of technical and fundamental analysis, AI trading and a keen sense of timing the market's mood swings. And hey, with more access and tools in the mix, Finding that sweet spot between risk and reward has never been more obvious. The global economy is like a roller coaster full of ups and downs. Geopolitical tensions, policy shifts, and market vibes can flip today's success into tomorrow's reality check. Mrs. Watanabe's journey from the quiet corners of Japanese households to the forefront of global finance isn't just about transformation. It's a revelation of the hidden power within everyday people. If you like this video, 
I'm sure you will like my other videos where I spill secrets of the trading industry. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Happy trading. See you in the next video.